My name is Jeanette Sutherland and I'd like to welcome you all to this FAS online meeting about the Crofters Bull Hire Scheme run by the Scottish Government. We are delighted that John Cowan and Gordon Mackay from the Bull Stud are here to tell us about their work and the scheme. We've had some questions submitted before and we'll take questions from the chat box or you can raise your hands if you want to ask questions live. So, and if anybody's got any uh, technical issues, uh, Ross McKenzie uh, is against the name Farm Advisory Service, he'll be able to help. Um, now, custodians are an important role as they are the crofter that takes responsibility for the bull when they are in the township. The Farm Advisory Service are launching an, inf an information note called Top Tips for Custodians, which also has suggestions on how you can equip your next generation of custodians. So I'll just share the screen and it's on the it's on the Farm Advisory Service or, uh, website already. So can you all see that? So that's the, um, the guide that we're launching tonight. Um, we will be emailing you all this uh, practical guide and also feedback forms after the meeting. And we would really appreciate if you could fill the feedback forms in. Uh, we will be recording the talk uh, by John and the Q&A session uh, um, so that other people that uh, aren't able to come can catch up. This meeting is the first of a series of three meetings and later on in the year there will be meetings covering calving and winter feeding and management. So I'd like to pass you over to John now. Thank you very much, John. Good evening, everyone. Um... I've been manager at Bullstad now since 2008. Uh, within the first year of being here, was told it was being closed down, which was a huge shock. Uh, following that, there was yet another review, uh, and we've come to now the modernised Bullstad, which was opened in 2014. Um, we've got a team of uh, three staff here, including myself. Couldn't add that to another four who look after all the, the bulls in the time that they're not on the crofts and select new bulls, etc. cetera. Um, I've been in the civil service now for 30 years. I started in the department way back in 1991 when it was still DAFs. Uh, then moved to the Crofters Commission in 2006. Uh, they moved out here in 2008 and then we moved back to the department in 2012. So that's that's my background. I've been started from agricultural officer, worked my way up. So um, a bit now about the bull scheme. Uh, the bull scheme is for groups of crofters, uh, two or more. And we supply bulls to townships from Shetland right through the islands down to Tyree basically the areas that were in the former Crofton counties. We can supply various breeds, including Aberdeen Angus, Charlie, Limousin, Ling, Solaire, Shorthorn, and Simmental. I mean, the Crofting, the Crofting uh, Cattle Improvement Scheme has been, it's the latest of bull supply, which, is, which started in the early 1900s. Um, in various shapes and forms. Um, initially, just a supply scheme, they also supplied rams. And they were, then they were given them free, but up till the 70s, they were given them free. Then they started charging them for wintering on the, on the stud. And from then, various workings of the scheme were evolved to take into various funding streams, etc. So we are where we are today. To hire a bull, it costs you £1,302.26 for a continental or a native if we winter at the stud. Um, that is reduced to 937.62 for a, for a continental or 989.70 for a native if they're wintered on the townships, but that is subject to our approval. We uh, tend to review who gets to keep bulls provided they are, their situation is suitable for wintering bulls. I've lost my, 
I've lost my string already. Um, oh no, my, my laptop's playing up. Sorry. No, don't worry. And yeah, you... yeah. Uh, so yeah, the bull scheme is intended to supply bulls to area where alternative service means are not feasible or readily available, such as AI or private hire. So we cover we cover that area. There, there are certain areas where either owning your own bull or maintaining a bull over the winter isn't possible. So that's the scheme is designed to cover that. Currently, oh, hello. I think there was a bit of interference, but keep going, John. <laughs> yeah, some, <laughs> yeah, something flashed up on my screen. Um, where was I? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you, know, you try to do something scripted and it doesn't work. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the supply um, of bulls has been a kind of a steady since I came here. We put out, um, well, it started off with 104 a year. And it slowly stepped up until the hiatus of the scheme being cancelled. And now we run around 120 bulls a year we put out. We run in total about 138 bulls. Um, our bulls themselves are all run along the high health basis. We work alongside the, the health scheme rather than being part of it. We run alongside them. We take advice from them and we make sure that everything is tested in accordance with, with their rules down to what we buy. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about your annual calendar of works, John? Yeah, yeah, our annual calendar uh, will start, start in September because that is when our real work starts. Once the bulls are out over the summer, it's all general work, just getting ready for the bulls coming back in. The bulls come back to us from September onwards. When the bulls come in, we take them in in batches. They're TB tested. They're tested. They're blood tested for brucellosis as well. And we do a blood test at that point for unis. We're also, we vaccinate them for BVD, IBR, lepto, and they get a 10 in one clostridial as well. The rest, I'm going to hand over to Gordy to go through our, our winter routine with them. Hi, I'm Gordon Mackay, John's assistant here at Not Miguel. Um, been a civil servant for 16 years, been back and forth in Not Miguel for the last five years at various times. Uh, so, as John says, the bulls come in, the easiest way to describe it is they go for a full MOT when they come back from being out for the working season. So, once we do the blood testing, we also bolus them. Uh, check feet and any other problems, check the skin, just give them a good look over, weigh them, and then get them ready for winter. If they have, if there's been any queries at all about their performance, their semen tested when they come home as well. Then we move them in to the main winter quarters where they go into their winter ration. We tend to get the smaller bulls in pairs, the larger bulls maybe pen singly. In the last couple of years, we've changed our bedding system a wee bit of vintage sawdust to part of the pen, which has made a big difference to keeping the bulls nice and clean throughout the, the wintering season. They go on to a total mixed ration of silage straw, uh, multi, multivitamin and mineral mix, and cereals, basically oats cereal rather than barley. Now, we tend to feed the bulls, depending on their age, weight and size, between 30 and 50 kilos a day. And we monitor just exactly where they're performing on it. Some are decreased, some are increased, just depends how it goes. And throughout the season, we may change our minerals a wee bit too. When it comes to the lead up towards the end of the winter, to the start of the season, the bulls can out. We change minerals and we put them on to a mineral, which boosts the bull fertility as well. Throughout the winter we're monitoring feet, try to give the bulls some exercise and we also semen test every bull about a month before they go out just to check their fertility and that's basically the run of the bulls throughout the winter. 
I'll pass you back to John now, unless anybody's got any questions on what we'll do. So October, October, uh, February and May are our main bull sale times. Um, October bulls, we, we tend to buy in advance of knowing what numbers we have just to maintain the average numbers in the herd. We know roughly what goes out every year. Forms, the actual bull farms themselves get sent out to the townships usually towards the end of October. They're processed over the winter. So then when it comes to the February sales, I know exactly what we need is, um, because we've fertility tested sort of from December, January onwards. So that we then know the final, roughly the final numbers that we will need. Uh, but there's always one or two casualties after that. So that hence the reason we go to the May sales. We buy, we only buy out of Scottish auctions, usually Sterling, because that's where the main sales are. If we need lings, we buy them out of Castle Douglas, but we have bought out of other, other Scottish auctions as well. Just but it's usually the main pedigree society sales that we go to. So on average in a year, we will buy anything up to 28 bulls. So they are all bought on strict criteria so that we, we can have a, a definitive um, average of what we're looking for. So they're bought on um, trueness to type, locomotion, quality of feet, um, size as well. We do not buy bulls that are, we know are going to grow huge or are going to be too small for the job. Temperament as well is a very important part of it because they're going out to townships and if they if they don't behave themselves here, they're not going to behave themselves where they're possibly in an open township and could totally run amok. Plus, we've got to think of the, the safety of not only the, the custodians, but also anybody else that might be in the vicinity. So that's once we've once we've picked our bulls, we get them home. Anything that comes in new is fully blood screen tested and then vaccinated up to what we need as well. So we know exactly what, what's in them. Um, interesting question popped up there from Marvin. Do we, we don't just buy on EBVs, but you have to match up what's on paper in front of you and what, what you're seeing. You can have a bull that's in the top 1% for everything and look terrible. But it, you know, so it's it is uh it's there's there's quite a lot of criteria. It's not just myself that picks the bulls either. I've got Gordon's always with me, and we always if it's a busy busy sale time, there can be two or three others with us as well, because you can you can't spot everything when they're going past you in a parade, especially if there's a, it's a big class, and we don't just buy on tickets either. We buy bulls on their merit, so that's that's an important part of it. Plus, I've got, I've got, I've got a finite budget. You know, I can't, I can't go crazy um, buying big ticketed bulls and come back and say, oh, well, I've only got ten. That's that. You know, we have to average it out so that we have enough good, good quality bulls or as good a quality bull as we can. Uh, bearing in mind that some of these sales we're up against a lot of commercial buyers, so. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh, some people think when I go down to the bull sales, it's like a couple of days holiday. It's not. When I come back, I'm exhausted physically and mentally. So uh, that's that covers that. We get bulls start to go out from early March in a slow trickle. Then once we go into April, we can have you know a dozen going out a week. Then we hit the first of May and it's mayhem. And we need to have, like, this year we put out 70 bulls in three weeks. So the logistics of doing that to various islands is, um, it's, a, it's a fair task. But we try to keep everybody happy and it's not always easy, especially when CalMac have problems as well. Uh, but there's nothing we can do about that. So that's, once we hit this time of year, hopefully we've got all the bulls out. That's when we start getting phone calls. If there's a, a lame bull or a bull not working, 
that's when we kick into gear, um, get the vet to go out and, and establish what's wrong. But we, at the same time, we've got a replacement lined up. And as part of the scheme, if your pool's not working, we will replace it without extra charge. We'll come and get the other, deliver the bull to you, come and get the other bull, and that's covered. So hopefully from this time of year onwards, it's, it's again, we're prepping the stud, cleaning it down thoroughly for biosecurity, and then getting winter feed organized. Takes us back to September and hey ho, they're back again. That's excellent. So, well, we've got one one question from the chat already. Um, it's, uh, somebody was wondering if the township um, could be sent the EBV figures for when they get their bull. That's not a problem. If anybody asks for them, they get them or they get direct. Depending on, depending on what breed it is, you can generally go on to the, the Breed Society web page and it will give you the current EBVs because EBVs aren't static. Uh, yes, I can give you the EBVs at the date of sale, but depending on how the, the bull's peers perform, especially the sire, et cetera, that can change. And I've seen it, I've seen it happen in quite a few cases that those, those EBVs that you originally bought it on are out of date. So I would say, yes, I'm more than happy to, and I'd be quite happy to download the latest EBVs and, and either email them to them or post them out. That is not a problem. Perfect. And as you say, like most people should have the year tag numbers or the custodians will, because they've got the passport. So if they've got EBVs, they should be able to be, be found and your local SAC office will be able to help you with it if uh, websites and that are a bit of a trauma. Um, so um, we've got, oh, excellent. We've got questions coming through here all the time. So um, um, how are the breeds of, uh, bull, breeds of bull available selected? How have you chosen which breeds are available? When we put the forms out, you have a first and second choice on your form. And we will look at that and try where possible to match that. Uh, especially if there's multiple bulls, because you, you're not limited to just one bull. And there's some townships that take up to three bulls um, and, and can be of different breeds. The only time we really look long and hard at it is an example of a township from somewhere, say on Harris, that asks for a Charlie. And from local knowledge, we know that that's just... Yeah, we know from local knowledge that that's just not possible, and we'll suggest that an on the alternative. But usually, the you know, the townships are pretty aware of what what they can and can't handle. Yeah. And an additional question to that is: uh, there's a query about whether there's any uh, plans of getting Shetland bulls. A uh, no, <laughs> they're either very difficult to come by. We did have shit. We had our own pedigree Shetland herd here when I came, um, which dwindled, and then they were dispersed to various, to various uh, members of the society. Uh, no, Shetland bulls is that's a specialty thing. That tend not to buy anything that's a one-off sort of purchase. Um, yeah. If yeah, if it's gone out for a couple of years and then coming back, especially if they're difficult to source, there's not really, we would have to go private to buy. And that kind of goes against our procurement, the government procurement policy. They're quite comfortable for, for me to buy through auction because it's open. But if I start doing private deals, that's not, that's not, not uh, possible. Great. And more questions coming through. Um, there's a, uh, is there a policy on how long you would keep a bull? And does it tend to be that one bull would go to uh, a township per season? The policy is we try to get as many years out of them as we can, but once they get to nine or 10, that they're really beyond the, they're, they're, they're not as reliable then. There is the occasional bull that will last and last. But the average is actually with us for about six years because they're 
between 18 months and 24 months when we buy them, uh, tend to cast them at eight years old or, or earlier. There, there are quite a few that will get cast earlier if they're, especially if they get arthritic. Um, it's very hard on feet and legs. Um, uh, a question about uh, costs now. Um, the higher costs that you uh, talked about earlier on in your presentation, does that include haulage or is haulage extra? No, that, that, that's all in. That's all in. That's your haulage insurance. There's a public liability insurance that we pay that covers the custodian and the bull when it's on the township. So because once they're off, once they're off the tail door of the lorry, they're you know they're off the crown property then because they're covered, they're covered by that until they're actually on the, the the township, and then once if anything happens in the township, that's when we have to have it's like ten million public liability cover. Yeah, so the townships don't need to worry because there's that public liability cover built into the scheme as well. Is that it's right? Built in, yeah, it's built into the scheme. Uh, but I would encourage them to, to have personal liability cover as well. But it, it is, uh, I've only ever had one claim against it. There was a bull and barra that went for a wander down the, the street and took the wing mirrors off a Volkswagen Polo. Um, and the red line had great fun and um, giving me a tail and off for having such a wild animal roaming about the streets of the town. <laughs> But that, fortunately, that's the only time I've had to use it. It's not, you know, it's it, it's something that we just have to have in place. And there, one of the important parts there is that is the the insurance only covers a custodian up to seventy. That's why we have to see, you know, your your custodian has to be seventy or under. Yeah, that's the the biggest part of it. Yeah, and in the top tips uh, document, it um, suggests that if you've got a custodian who's coming up to the age limit, that the FAS mentoring scheme could be useful to help equip the next generation with the skills that they need to be custodians, because it's a very important role and people need to have the practical management, but also be able to do the cattle moves as well and the passports. Do you want to explain a little bit about that, John? Yeah, the, that's one of, one of the the bugbears, there was a question that you put, is there anything I would like them to do sooner? Uh, I quite regularly get, when checking CTS, get a line of red animals. And that's purely because they haven't moved the bull on. Uh -huh. So if they haven't moved the bull on, it pings back to me and say, where did it go? The other important thing is on your application form, we ask for the, the custodian's uh, CPH. So it's, it's good that the CPH that I'm given is actually A, where the bill's going, and B, is a, a cattle keeping herd CPH. Because if not, it just it's just a, around the houses with, with BCMS to sort it out. So that's one thing. The other thing I would like people to contact me sooner on is if, if, if the bull is at all lame or they've got any doubts because they're... Uh, the longer it takes when a bull's lame to get veterinary treatment to it can determine whether that's just something that they're going to get over or if, it, if an infection gets into a joint that could write a bull off. Yeah and do you want to explain a little bit about the the policy for if you if you call the vet how the the bills pays? Yeah we as, as of last year if you do have to call the vet in I prefer if it's built directly to us because um, we would get very few people that were actually, they were just paying the bills themselves and didn't know whether the, you know, the vet was getting called in time or they were kind of restricting what they were doing with it. At least then if I know we're paying the bill, the vet's not going to have any qualms, going to get out and he's going to get the treatment that he needs because some of the drugs are expensive, uh, but some of them are absolutely necessary. Great. So moving on, there's lots of questions, which is fantastic. Um, another question about breed. Have you got any plans to get stabiliser bulls? Uh, no, no, there's not any real demand for them from the Crofting townships. Not only that, currently stabilisers are more of a, a, a marketing company rather than an open auction. You, can, you cannot buy a stabiliser bull at an open auction. So... Okay, so that would be an issue. Um, 
for the for the meantime, I'm going to say no. But with the um, with everything else, it's, it, we're always open to looking at, at different ways and with the genetic the genetic engineering, etc. That's that's going on to find more methane efficient cattle. It could be in the future that these things are possible, but right now it's a no. Yeah, and a question uh, that was submitted previously. Uh, do you get feedbacks from groups on how the bull or their, their calves performed when they're sold? We do, yes, um, quite frequently. I'm, I'm in contact with them all e, when I'm organising the bull going out and likewise when the bull's coming back and some of them in between times as well. Uh, usually get quite sound feedback in that. We also monitor the the calves going through the local sales. That gives us a good feedback on on the quality anyway. Uh, plus, they're never shy to tell you if they're either calving problems with the bull or you know if there's if there are any issues. So, but we're quite we're quite happy with that. There was actually when I started, there was a questionnaire that went out with the applications, but they got. They got paid like 120 pounds to fill this in and send it back, and then when they became there was no payment on it. It was uh, it wasn't quite as effective. But I am I am in the the middle of designing a a performa to put out just so that we can monitor the performance of the bulls and see if there's any you know if there's any any issues that we can deal with. But I'm I'm always open to if anybody wants to call or drop me an email or whatever I'm quite willing to deal with that. Excellent now here's a question more on the finances of the scheme um, do, you, do you have uh, figures on uh, how much the hire covers the cost of it and how much is uh, uh, supported by the Scottish government? Uh, not straight hand. No it that's varies. no problem. It varies with the it varies we won't with put the you on the spot. <laughs> yeah no no, no. No, that's that's um, that's not not really a straightforward issue. No worries. Now, moving on to more practical concerns. Um, I, I'm sorry, I misunderstood one of the questions. Is there a certain time limit of how long the hires or short the hires can be, or is that by no, negotiation it's or no? It's a season, basically. Uh, we do have we have quite a few townships that overwinter the bull and we'll keep the bull for one, two, three, four years, depending on their policy for um, replacements. It tends to be a two year cycle. So they'll get the bull for two years. Uh, well, we'll get the bull, it comes back here and then the same bull goes back out. Unless there's a problem with that bull, they'll get the same bull next year or if we've got to move it elsewhere. Um, but generally, um, the higher is basically from when they want them to when they want them away. Because a lot of townships like to get, once the bull's done, they don't want to hang about um, with a bull that they don't need. And it helps us to have them home earlier too. I mean, there's certain, certain places like the North US, there can be a dozen bulls on different townships within a few square miles of each other. And the fences take a battering. <laughs> Because once they get bored, they're yeah, they're just looking for for trouble. Grand, okay. <laughs> well, was that slightly worrying thought? We'll move on to. Um, do you ever uh, uh, do any AI uh, from the bulls and the stud, or is that a uh, no? No worries. And um, when when we're out of these strange COVID times, is it possible for people to visit the bull stud? We don't greatly encourage it, but it is possible. We've had had in the past um, extract students from Craveston used to come for, in their third year too. They used to come in. Um, we get vet students as well every now and then. Um, plus there's other agent, uh, animal health uses for training. SEPA uses for training as well. So it, it is possible. It, it can be arranged, but we don't tend not to encourage it for the biosecurity side of it. Of course, biosecurity is very important. Um, and um, and then there's a question whether uh, you would ever hire to an individual rather than to a group of crofters. 
we can hire to an individual where they may be there the last person in the township of capital and it's not practical for us to put them. You know, we can't, we try our best to join townships together. There are several places where two or three townships have run together that used to maybe get an individual mm -hmm. bull, but the cattle numbers aren't there. And if an individual contact us and say, well, I want to join the scheme, I would look around, see, see what they're wanting, look around to see if there is possibly somebody that they could work with. Not a lot, it, may, it makes it cheaper for them if they can split the cost. It is designed for groups. Um, so that's, now if we started doing individual bull hires, that would be, that would cause problems. Yeah. Okay, so more, some of the questions that were submitted earlier. Um, when you're buying young bulls, how do you ensure that they're not given too many cows in their first season? We have to go faithfully on the numbers of cows that are given to us on the forms. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. But there are, there are townships that we know don't have a lot of cows, not particularly hard area. Um, the, there are there are specific townships that we know from yeah, from years of experience that you put a young bull out to them, he's not going to be hard work. He's going to be looked after, and he comes back. Because if you put a young bull out to something that's you know hard hard ground yeah. or overwork him. You never really get that to develop into a good, strong, mature bull. Um, and another question that came in that alludes to something you mentioned earlier about the feet. Uh, do you find that bulls have more feet problems now than in the past? Well, I'll pass that one to Gordy because he does the feet. <laughs> uh, as John says, I do all the feet trimming. Uh, no, no, a lot of the feet problems are. Normally, if stones go into the feet, causing abscesses. Uh, wrong type of feeding. Bulls fed predominantly on barley when they're young can cause foot problems. But you know, the worst things we get with feet is if we get a very, very wet grazing season where there's a lot of poaching or a very, very wet autumn when the ground gets heavily poached, and then we get a dry spring and a dry summer, that's when bulls get hurt and feet get hurt when they're dismounting the cows on rough land. But I wouldn't say that we're getting any more feet problems now. Uh, when the bulls are at home, it's keeping on top of the feet, keeping on a, a regular check on them, see any problems, pull them out, put them in the foot crash, have a wee look, sort it out and treat it. But I wouldn't say they're any worse than what they were years ago. Um, I've been working in bulls for a long time now and yeah, it's just bulls. You know, as a vet once said to me, there's six things needed for a working bull. There's one each corner that's four feet and two between the back legs. And that's all that's needed for a working bull. So, you know, just keep an eye on them. That's all. I think most of the bulls have come back in. If, if they go lame, there's normally a reason they've either hurt themselves or it's an abscess. But most of them, the feet come back in not bad condition. Well, that's yeah. good. And have you got any requests for uh, um, custodians or people with uh, bulls about the feet, since that's your department, Gordy? Same as what John says, if there's a slight problem, tell us as soon as possible. Or a concern, tell us. We can get a vet out to look at it. If it's on the mainland, one of our cells can look at it. But, you know, it's the age-old problem. The sooner, the sooner you see something, look at it. And don't let it fester or don't let it carry on. But I mean, you know, most people now, they're on top of it right away. Oh, and uh, don't let the bull out in the, in the hill or the common and forget about him. Keep an eye on him. You know, that's the main thing, you know. But otherwise, no, I don't think the feet's any worse than they were years ago. Oh, that's good. See that I'm getting used to doing them all the time. Now, <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> Might be shifting baselines, but we'll we'll go with that. They're not getting worse anyway. Thank goodness. Um, and we've got a question more about the the breeds. Um, so the townships on the farms, uh, th th is they select which breeds that they're looking for. John, is that right? Yeah, they they tend to they tend to have a township meeting usually turn of the year they discuss what they want and usually agree on what breed they want um there's always one that will throw up some some weird and wonderful but no they they tell us what they want i mean we have sort of a a, a steady number that we maintain of specific breeds so 
it, it allows us to adjust up and down then what, what, what's required really. Just as I know, we've almost got about 70 limousines. They make up out of the, the 140 bulls, we've got 70 limousines, which are by far the most popular choice. And uh, obviously, because um, people are trying to get bulls to cover two jobs, they're wanting uh, calves to be able to sell, but also uh, heifers to join their own herds. If um, is there, uh, do you want to talk about different options of maybe two townships joining up to get one maybe more replacement bull and one more terminal or things to uh, so that people aren't getting cows are well, getting finer and finer all the time. <laughs> we te we tend to get cycles. Um with some townships where, whereby they'll, for two years they'll take a limmy, then they'll go for a short turn or a Simmental or Aberdeen Angus. Um, and they have a cycle. Oh, so, okay. And then there are some who just buy in their own, well, they'll buy their replacements from their neighbours. So that's another thing that's, that we have to look at carefully when we're, when we're selecting bulls, that the bull hasn't, that's going to them this year hasn't been on their neighbour that, again, local knowledge helps there, hasn't been on their neighbour that they buy the heifers from. So, um, and there's a lot of, a lot of record note bookkeeping goes on in the background. So we know exactly who's been where and when. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, we're, we're, I've seen us also have somebody maybe have a, a problem with bull and we can't say, oh, well, sorry, I've not got another limousine to give you right now. They say, oh, I'll take a short turn or I'll take an angus for the last few. Likewise with heifers or somebody, you know, the, a lot of the townships that will take two bulls will take, you know, an angus and a limousine or a short turn and a limousine just to, to give them that option to cover their, cover their heifers. Great. And um, I think we're maybe going to back to Gordy. There was a question in the chat about um, a, a, a condition called crow's feet. I don't know if I've read that right. Crow's feet. Crow's feet. Crow's feet. Uh, that's, oh. um, that's, um, that's one for John. Yeah. Crow's feet are it's a condition that makes the, the feet spiral when, they're, when the feet develop. Uh, Unfortunately, we try to to study their feet. Uh, somebody's did it, yeah. Somebody's put it's a US term. It is a US term. It's like basically it's our world. It's court true feet. Right, yeah. world. I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm caught up with you all guys now. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, you. What we have to do is when we are buying, we look at their feet very, very carefully, and you can t certainly tell with some that have had their feet worked on before the sales, and that's in a young bull. But some it's impossible to tell. But you don't know, that's one thing you don't want, especially if you're going to keep uh, replacement heifers off that because they pass them on. It, so no, that, that is one of the major things we look for and it is foot problems in bulls when they're walking past this. But as I say, without basically just about you know, physically inspecting every bull at the sale, um, you can't guarantee. You, there are occasional ones that we do get, but they tend to go bye bye if they're if you know if foot problems develop. That's uh, plus it's, the, you're constantly working on them. We know the ones that are, are susceptible to things like that. And if we're working on them a lot, we know it's time for them to go and pass them on. Um, and on a similar topic, a question put in previously is, uh, we are in the health scheme, is it okay to use the Scottish Government bulls? Absolutely, because we work along with ESHRAC, um, have regular meetings with Franz Fischler, Bruce, not Fischler, Bruce, Bruce and uh, it was, well, Tim Geraghty, I think Tim's moved on now, We and our own vets regularly keep in touch we were going to, we were looking at joining the health scheme, but realistically we are complementary to the health scheme. So no, we buy strictly on what we're told and test for what we're, you know, we just say like, what do you need us to test for? We'll do it how frequently. Um, specifically with Yoni's testing, we test them now when they come in, but we also do a dung sample and a blood before they go out. So 
anything inconclusive gets retested, it comes back inconclusive again, it's gone. So yet yeah, no, um, there was a there was a question raised last year about um, in the health scheme you're supposed to be isolated for six weeks before they go to the stock and the croft, and in reality they're isolated here for six to eight months. So you know the biosecurity is very very high here. So um, our health status is is hopefully as good as we can get it. That's excellent. And um, got a question about, um, we've talked about uh, townships that have been in the scheme for a long time. If you were new to it and interested in joining, what would be the process? Um, if they, well, you can download the form from the, from the website, but if they want to give me a call or Gordon a call, we're more than welcome to talk through the the pros and cons or, you know, any concerns that they have before they join it, uh, we're quite happy to discuss. I usually, if I, get a, if I get a new applicant, I usually phone them up and have a discussion with them before I approve it anyway. Great. And we've got a few more health questions. Uh, do you test for Campylobacter? Yes, we do. We sheath wash for Campylobacter, um, which is quite complicated now. We used to have our own local lab in Inverness where we could do the samples and they hit the lab within an hour. That then went to Aberdeen, um, then Edinburgh. Now there you have to buy special kits to have and have them overnight couriered down to Weybridge. So it's and it's not cheap, it's about 70 quid a kit before you courier them down and before you pay for the test. But it's something important that we do. We, We've only picked up, and well, in the 13 years I've been here, I've picked up two. And I think we covered this earlier, but um, um, but uh, when the bulls uh, come back from hire, you do tests then, don't you? Yes, yeah. Anything, if they come in even halfway through the season, anything that comes back in, once it comes back in the door, it's tested. Yeah, we take a blood and take um, do a sheath wash as well. So there's no way we wouldn't put, you know, if a bull came back and recovered, we wouldn't put it back out as a, a replacement unless uh, a clean bill of health. And if there were problems found at those things, would you get back in touch with the herds that the yes, bull come from? Yeah, we do. The The last herd that, that we did have a problem with, we actively engaged with their vets and gave them advice how to go forward with it. Um, yeah, and we've, we've managed this. Yeah, our, our concern is that their cows are proper. It's, I mean, it, running the stud here is like having a herd of 4,000 cows all over the remote areas of Scotland. So we have to look at it that. We've got to maintain it like that. I, you know, I, I can't just think of the, the hundred and, 40 bulls I've got here, I've got to think of the broader picture. So, we, no, we can't afford for anything to, uh, we're rigorous with all the testing that we, we do. Um, if there's ev ever anything else comes up, that's why we, we get advice on that and we take it further. That's fantastic. Is there any other questions in the room? So, well, we're, we're, um, just to I'll just go over, reiterate a few things that we uh, said at the start of the meeting. So the, the Farm Advisory Service website will send you the link. It's got uh, links to all the, the forms that John's talked about and all his contact details. So if you, you know, after this meeting, if you have other questions, I'm sure John will be quite happy for you to send an email or lift the phone. And, uh, and we'll also send you a copy of the new practical guide about top tips for the custodians. And um, and if you've got any other questions, obviously you can just uh, email me, like the people who emailed the questions who couldn't make the meeting tonight. And um, and if there's um, no other questions, I would just like to really thank um, uh, uh, John and Gordy for uh, spending time in their evening coming to speak to us. We really appreciate your time, and it's always interesting to see the other side of what's happening in the Bull Stud.